I know you may have had a sack before, but they called it a tackle for a loss at some point, right? I forget what game that was, but to get the first official sack, well, how'd that feel uh, in that game? Yeah, and that was pretty cool. Um, I've been doing a little more blitzing this year, so finally to, to make Chins look good on his end was awesome. And came at a good point in the game where we needed to keep him out of the, the end zone, so yeah, it was, it was cool. And then with the pick, too, I mean, just showing your versatility, you know, we've obviously seen that, but in, in, uh, is to, to, to do what you're doing with the sack and then have the pick and do everything else and the tackles, I mean, how nice is it to show off the all-around game, I guess? Yeah, and again, I think it's just a testament to the coaches giving me those opportunities to play like all over the field doing different stuff. But yeah, it's been a folk, like I've known my strengths from my strengths and where can I improve to make those plays where I've had opportunities in the past. So yeah, it's it's good to see on my end as a confidence builder that, you know, now you're making those plays and you're making them all over the field, so. The way they're using you, I mean, talking to Michael Callahan, he said that the defense couldn't do what they do if it wasn't for you, just the, the playing safety and linebacker risk at the same time. And just, how do you like about the role that they've kind of created for you and getting to do different things? I think the thing I like about it is it's almost, it's funny how full circle it is, kind of like being back in high school in Seaside where I was safety, linebacker, just just really a football player at the end of the day. And yeah, it's, it's I'm having more fun now playing this position than anything. I almost feel like it's tailor-made for me in a sense. But to what Mike said, I mean, I couldn't do without my job without what those guys do. I don't think those guys get enough credit. I, we have the best D-line the front four, however you want to call them, in the entire country without a doubt. And, you know, you see Jaden Verge and Ahmed getting a lot of praise because they're running up stats on, on the perimeter, but like Herbert Gums, Braxton, Mike, Sheldon Newton, those guys don't get enough praise because if you really turn on the film and watch them dominate interior, they're, they're doing a hell of a job. I was going to jokingly ask, like, what, what position do you play? Like, is, is it made up at this point, or like, what, like, what would you call it? Um... Well, I mean, dime is, is the package I play. I am the dime, but, you know, I'm, there's times where I'm lining up back at boundary safety, times where I'm lining up at will linebacker, and there's times where I'm even lining up at stud or defensive end. So kind of all over the field, and it kind of just depends more so the call. It's like a, a plug-and-play position, you know, but um, the versatility is what I like, so all over. What, what, when did this uh, plan kind of come into fruition, I guess, for you? I mean, we we're kind of joking around on, you know, when you're getting on the edge and you're getting haircuts or whatever. But like, when when did this all kind of come into play that you were going to do all this this year? Um, we started practicing it in spring ball, and it was just a lot of learning because, you know, I played the same position my whole career here, and now I'm essentially learning how to play will linebacker a lot and how to communicate with the fronts and how to play off of them. And then after I took that stride learning the position, it I think gave Chins and Stock the confidence to all right, he can handle this, so let's go ahead and give him more responsibilities and kind of take the leash off a little bit. So that transition came over fall camp, I feel like, and even still over the course of this season. So I you know, I really do appreciate them like trusting me to do all the different jobs. But yeah, it was more of a learning curve than anything over the off season. What does it mean to you to wear the green dot? What does that, what does that little dot mean to you? Yeah, it's, well, I, like I like it a lot. I, Chins does an amazing job in the head the headset, uh, communicating, giving me formation tells, getting guys on the same page. But it's, you know, the thing I'm appreciative of is, of is it's a trust thing, right? He trusts me to be able to handle that stuff and also do my job and play without it being a distraction. So um, I guess the what it means to me is the trust aspect. When, when you first heard like that was going to be a thing this year in college football, I mean, well, like, was that maybe a goal of yours to wear that? Um, not necessarily. I mean, it, it typically is um, you're either Mike linebacker, Will linebacker, or one of your safeties. So it kind of makes sense now that we're doing so much of this dime personnel that you're having someone who's kind of playing all over the field, you know, in that role. And a guy, that, you know, I've been around, I understand the defense, so I can, you know, I understand what he's talking about and I, I'm able to communicate. So it wasn't a surprise or a goal, but. It was, you know, it's. I, I like that I'm the one that got it. I think um, I asked Eric about it last week. I was curious your perspective on it. How much does he give you, or like when he's communicating with you, like how much does he give you at times? Yeah, not not a lot. I mean, it's kind of funny. I have him in my head, and he's 
sometimes you, get, you can feel the juice through the mic. I, he's up in the press box and feels like he's standing right next to me. He's like, all right, let's go get him. You're calling, you know, maybe call a pressure, or, you know, like a, something we've rehearsed in practice. And it's really not a lot. He's not just throwing a bunch of words at me, but I think something that helps me is like I'll watch film with him like one on one throughout the week, and and I understand like if he gives me like a hey uh, this like we call a play by a certain name we call it. He said alert this here, and then now I know the whole picture of kind of what's going on, and I can communicate that the plays off of it. So it doesn't take a whole lot for him and I to be on the same page, and and I know a good amount of the stuff beforehand. Anyways. I, I guess that's why I was kind of setting you up for that because Eric told us that he does throw a lot at you yeah. when it comes to the communication. The reason why the, you wear the green dot is because you're the guy that can process it the fastest and then use it the fastest. Yeah. Would you would you agree um, with that or? I mean, we got a lot. We <laughs> we got a lot of smart players on our defense, so there's a lot of guys I'm sure can handle that. But yeah, I think him and I are just you know we're uh, on the same page a lot with how we see things and anticipating certain things and putting ourselves in positions for success. Why do you think your uh, skill set fits this, this new role this year? Um, well, I feel like I, I, I'm not shy of contact at all, so I can handle, you know, despite being 195, I can handle playing in the box. I'm comfortable playing there. And then, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm a safety at heart. I can cover, I can play all over the field. So. I'm comfortable in all those positions. So he's not asking me to do anything I'm not comfortable doing. What, uh, I know it's always a big thing, the targetings and all that, but how, have you had to try to do anything differently? How have you tried to focus on do, doing it within the rules or within what, what some people think the rules are? <laughs> yeah, you know, I, still I don't have a, a concrete explanation of exactly what targeting is. But, I mean, if it was up to me, I'd take that rule and, you know, toss it. But at the end of the day, I gotta play within the rules of the game and what's going on today. And I owe it to my team to stay on the field. So, yeah, I've had to, you know, adjust and learn from, especially the Hawaii one. The Oregon one got overturned anyways, but the Hawaii one, yeah, there's an opportunity for me to stay within that strike zone. So, it's a learning lesson, but I'm not gonna slow down the way I play. I was gonna say, how do you, how, what's that give and take like where you have a certain way you play and that's why you're effective out there and, and, and taking it right up to that line but obviously knowing that there is a line and yeah. I know it's happening in the speed of the game so fast and stuff so how, how do you try to deal with it from that aspect? Um, well I mean a non-negotiable for me is I've seen people get targeting and then play tentative afterwards because they're afraid of getting it again and that's not going to be me. Um, you know I, I, where I make my improvement is is over the course of week in practice um, aiming within that target zone, trying to stay where I need to be and understanding if this is a guy that's going to slide or not slide, being prepared for that. But I mean, when the game's on, I'm not going to slow it down. Um, you know, and by nature, the way, you know, I play the game is, you know, it may or may not happen over the course of the season, but I'd rather be playing fast and free the whole time and aggressive than playing tentative. Given, given your career and everything, I mean, just to be – here at this point with the record, the ranking, the outlook for what you guys hope to do, I mean, how, how much fun are you having? How gratifying has this season been for you? And, and, and just how do you look at wanting to kind of have that kind of storybook in the year? Yeah, this is, I mean, this is, this season up until this point is everything I believe this team could be. And, you know, I believe there's even much, much more we can do aside from what our record shows. I'm just talking about our on-field performance. So, where I, you know, put my focus on is how much more we can do right now. But I mean, yeah, for myself and you know the the seasons we've experienced in the years past, like this is absolutely, um, you know, a dream come true season. This is exactly where I want to be. Um, this is a team that I always knew that Boise State was capable of having, and we're finally putting it all together. And we're continuing to get better. Um, it's kind of an obvious question or whatever. What is the the green dot, yeah, it's just uh, to let the refs know who has the, the communication in their helmet. There's only allowed to be one on the field, so it's so just so we don't have too many mics, so it's just coach the player. Yeah, um, and then uh, you, you brought up your level of physicality, man. Where does that come from? Like, I, I mean, it's one thing to, like, say you're fearless and then be fearless. Like, those are two different things. A lot of people probably think that they are in a football field. I don't know how many actually like truly are, right? So like to throw your body around like you do at times, why do you do it? Where does that come from? 
Yeah, I think, you know, my greatest coach and influence in my life even is, is my dad. You know, I, I don't even have to, to be there to know how he played the game because, you know, if he posts something on, on a Facebook, you got high school teammates DMing or commenting on it, boom, because, like, that was the way he played the game. That's the way he taught me to play the game, how he shaped my mentality. So, like, I grew up looking at that game, th this game through that lens, and that's I'm a product of him and how he played. Sweet. All right.